Hey everyone, it's Matt here with Night Run Studio. So you've got an enemy in your game and he's capable of dealing damage, but he's just standing there right now. We'd like him to be able to chase the player. Additionally, let's create an aggro range so that the enemy only chases when the player comes close, and let's set that aggro range in front of the enemy so that we can sneak around behind and get close before he hears us, or attack from the front where he sees us a little more quickly. Later on, we'll add animations and things, but for now, let's start with the chase and aggro range. Let's get started. All right, so in order to get your enemy chasing the player, you will need a collider of some sort. I'm using a Capsule Collider 2D. You'll want to have a rigid body. Make sure that it is set to dynamic as body type, as that's what allows it to move. All right, we're ready to write our script to get the enemy following the player now. So we'll create a new C Sharp script. I'm gonna call this one enemy underscore movement, keeping with the convention of having enemy underscore at the start of all our enemy scripts. Now in order to make our enemy move, we are going to need to be able to talk to his rigid body. So I'll make a public rigid body reference here called RB. And normally in Unity then, we could add our script onto the enemy and just drag our rigid body right into that box. However, with enemies, we often want to spawn these into the game dynamically at runtime, and we're not going to be able to drag opponents into boxes at runtime, so we need to code this script to find the rigid body for itself. So first of all, let's make this a private reference after all. And then down in our start method, we're just going to tell the enemy that its rigid body is going to be equal to, we will just type get component rigid body 2D. That way the game object will just look on itself for a rigid body component, and it'll fill that variable in for itself. All right, so now that we can talk to a rigid body, we need to find out what direction we need to go to chase the player. So to do this, we need a public transform reference. Let's call it player. Now for the moment in Unity, I'm just gonna drag the player in here, though later we'll code this similar to what we did with our rigid body. Now we can just come down into update, and here we're gonna make a vector2 variable called direction. And this is where we'll calculate the direction the enemy needs to go. So we'll just take our player's position and subtract the transform position of the enemy. This will get us the difference between their two positions, which is the direction he needs to go. Now the only problem with this method though is that if the enemy is really far away on the X and close or on the Y, you can get some weird numbers that can affect his speed. And so we're just going to put our player position minus transform position in brackets and then add dot normalized. This just makes it so that it has a magnitude of 1, meaning it will always be out of 1 for both the X and the Y, which allows us to then just use speed to control how fast he moves. So now that we've got our direction figured out, we can just tell our rigid body that its velocity should be equal to direction, and now he'll start moving in that direction. The only problem is, of course, that he'll be moving very slowly, so let's make it possible to control the speed by making a public float called speed, and then we'll simply multiply our direction times that variable. Already we can test this in Unity, though don't forget to actually give the enemy a number for his speed. Here I'm just going to make sure that my rigid body is not frozen on the X and Y as I did earlier, and now I've got an enemy that chases me around. Of course he's not flipping, he's not animated, and he never stops, but we're off to a good start. So next up let's create an aggro range so that he only chases us once we're within range. To do this, I'm going to add a circle collider to my enemy. I'm just going to click Edit Collider, and I'll expand this. And I'm actually going to move it so that it is more in front of him than behind, so it's sort of like a field of view. If I'm in front of him, I'll enter the aggro range sooner, and when I come around behind, he won't notice me until I get quite close. I also want to remember to set this to a trigger, otherwise my player will bump into it, which could be fun, but not what we want. So now we'll just add an on trigger enter 2D method. And now what I want to do is create a boolean value called is chasing so that our enemy knows if it is currently chasing or not. And now anytime something enters this trigger, we'll set is chasing to true. There's some obvious problems with that, but we'll fix those in a moment. Now in update, we'll just say if is chasing is true, and then we'll put all of this movement and direction finding inside of curly brackets. We'll then do the opposite in our on trigger exit so that when the player leaves the aggro range, we'll set is chasing to false. Now the obvious problem here is that if anything enters the enemy's trigger, he'll start chasing the player. So if another enemy enters, if a tree enters, that sort of thing. So we need a way to check if it's the player. So first let's just pop into Unity, go to our player, and make sure that we have a tag set to player so that the player is uniquely identified as a player. Now in our on trigger enter method, we can just check first of all to see when something enters the trigger, 
if that collision game object has a tag called player. If so, then we'll start chasing. We'll then do essentially the same thing in on trigger exit, so that only when the player leaves the trigger area will the enemy stop chasing. Now there's no setup necessary at this point. When we start the game, he won't follow. Once we get close, he will. And once we get far enough away, he'll stop chasing. However, there's a little problem. <laughs> you can see that he's still continuing on in the direction he was going. While he's no longer chasing the player, he still maintains the velocity that he had while in chase mode. And so we're going to need to fix that. Now the good news is this is actually a really easy fix. All we want to do is make sure that once the player leaves the enemy's trigger area, the velocity of his rigid body gets set to vector 2, 0, essentially stopping the enemy. Now we just have the remaining problem of what if this enemy gets spawned in at runtime? He won't know what player to put in the player box. So let's code this script to figure that out for itself. To do this, we'll just set this to a private reference. Now the only time the enemy needs to know where the player is is if he's actually chasing the player. So let's come down to our on trigger enter. Now after our if statement here, where we check to see if it's the player, we can then use that collision data to fill this reference. So we can tell it that the player is actually equal to the object that just came into the collider. Now we don't need to fill this variable every time the player enters. We only need to do it once the first time, and then the enemy can keep that reference. So here we'll just say if player is null, meaning if he doesn't know where the player is, let's fill it in. Otherwise it'll skip this line and just move on. So there's no setup necessary at this point, and we can finally test it. You'll see he was idling. When I entered, he started to chase. When I left, he stopped following. I can also sneak around behind for a back attack, and here I can get quite close before he finally follows me. Of course, there's still some work to do. We want to create a state machine where we will be able to move him between idle and chase states, changing animations and other behaviors, but we'll get to that in the next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.